As a belief system, Jainism is strongly focused on non-violence in all forms. They do not eat meat since a life had to be taken to obtain meat, they try to prevent injury to even the smallest of creatures. That is why Jains don't roam out in the dark to prevent stepping on small creatures like ants. Jain monks, especially Svetambara sect, cover their mouth to prevent flying insects, microbes from entering their mouth and getting killed. Digambara Jain monks do not wear cloths since to obtain cloths plants have to be injured or silk worms have to be killed which is again violence. While Buddhism also considers non-violence as a virtue, it is not too focused on the non-violence aspect. That is why Buddhist monks accept meat when offered, wear full cloths. Their main focus is nirvana and excessive focus on concepts like vegetarianism, non-injury to other creatures is considered as attachment. The Buddha taught the importance of middle path i.e. neither being gluttonous nor starving oneself to death. Jainism is completely an atheistic belief system. Jains do not believe in the existence of an all-powerful creator god. For Jains the world was never created but has always existed. Buddhism is not an atheistic doctrine since they talk about the existence of gods and a creator god but according to Buddhists praying or trusting these gods have no meaning since they are fallible. The Buddhists are expected to meditate and achieve nirvana rather than pray and focus on some deity. Jains believe in the existence of a living soul whereas Buddhists don't. On many other aspects they are actually quite similar to each other. Buddhism and Jainism were not related to each other as parent or child but rather children of common parent, born at different intervals, though at about the same period of time and marked by distinct characteristics, though possession a strong family of resemblances. W. W. Hunter writes, Jainism is as much independent from other sects, especially from Buddhism as can be expected, from any other sect. Notwithstanding certain similarities, it differ from Buddhism in its ritual and objects of worship. Similarities. 1. The source of both the religion is Vedic religion and both an indebted to Upanishads. 2. Both Gautam Buddha and Mahavir belong to princely families and not to priestly families. 3. Both deny the existence of God. 4. Both denied the authority of the Vedas and the necessity of performing sacrifices and rituals. 5. Both have accepted the theories of karma rebirth and moksha. 6. Both taught in the language of the common people i.e. Prakrit and not in Sanskrit which was the language of the priests. 7. Both of them were opposed to animal sacrifices. 8. Both of them admitted disciples from all the castes and from both sexes. 9. Ahimsa is the prominent principle of both the religions. 10. Both Buddhism and Jainism put stress on right conduct and right knowledge and not on religious ceremonial and ritual as the way to obtain salvation. 12. Both the religions were later on divided into two sects. Buddhism was divided into Mahayana and Hinayana. Jainism was divided into Svetambara and Digambara. 13. Both had their own three gems or, Tri Ratna. Tri Ratna of Jainism were right philosophy right knowledge and right character. The Tri Ratna of Buddhism were Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. 14 Both had three main religious texts. Tripitaka, i.e. Vinay Pitak, Sutapitaka and Abhidhamma Pitak were the three religious texts of Buddhism, whereas Anga i.e., Anga, Upanga and Mulgrajitha were those of the Jainism. Dissimilarities. 1. Difference regarding conception moksha. According to Buddhism, a man attains moksha when he ends all the desires and can attain it while living in the world. But according to Jainism moksha is freedom from miseries and can be attained only after death. 2. Means of attainment of moksha. According to Buddhist Sangha is proper for attainment of moksha and they hate self-mortifications and severe penances. Jainism believes in fasts and severest penances. 3. Ahimsa. Though both emphasize the principle of ahimsa, yet Jainism is more strict in this connection. 4. Soul. Buddhists do not believe in the existence of soul whereas Jainism believes the existence of soul in every living being. 5. Regarding conduct. Buddhism emphasizes the eight noble pithas, whereas Jainism emphasizes tri ratna. 6. Language of religious texts. Most of the Jain texts are in Sanskrit and Prakrit whereas Buddhist texts are in Pali. 7. Their connection with Hinduism. Jain religion is nearer to Hinduism whereas Buddhism followed the policy of keeping away from Hinduism. 
8 caste system. Jains opposed it but Buddhism opposed and attacked vehemently. 9 royal support and patronage. Buddhism received the royal support and patronage of kings like Ashoka and Kanishka. But Jainism could never receive strong royal support and patronage. 10. Propagation. Buddhism spread to foreign countries whereas Jainism did not travel outside the boundaries of India there is one essential difference between the two religions, which I believe underwrites all the other distinctions that emerge as a package deal. Both emerged as revolutionary departures from their parent tradition of Vedic Upanishadic Hinduism, whose conceptual model was retained in both alike. Both as well share a fierce, if qualified, individualism, in the sense that they offered not just the opportunity, but the mandate, for all capable men and ultimately women to adopt a direct root form of spiritual practice which was utterly divorced from the political order and the incidence of one's birth inside of it. All these itemized lists of doctrinal differences miss the point of genuine philosophical divergence between them, which begets all the subordinate particulars of faith and practice. This difference is on the question of intention. The Jains elevate the principle of ahimsa, or non-violence, to a paramount doctrine, as opposed to the mere principle it appears as in Buddhism. Buddhists, in contrast avoid harm to others primarily in service to oneself. Harming others disrupts one's mental peace and creates bad karma, and in turn negative consequences down the road. Jains believe even unintended deeds create negative karma, whereas Buddhists regard the mind as the only imprint of your karmic record, which makes it thus impossible to endure karmic effect for things unbeknownst to it. The reason this point is so crucial and tricky is that absent-mindedness, failure to act ethically because of witlessness and moral laziness, rather than outright malice, still represents a type of intention. Early Buddhism is ferociously skeptical of the self-service of those who merely wish to be better or more holy, and indeed, the cult of good intentions very rapidly conduces to narcissism, the self-importance of the intender, rather than the recipient of his deeds. So, in one sense, it is ridiculous to believe you suffer consequences for deeds you did not intend. On the other hand, it is extremely dangerous to satisfy oneself that merely because one intends well he or she is off the hook for concern about whether the deed actually achieved the beneficent effect. As we often see in politics, it can be a vile ruse to carry on creating bad effects and not even care, because one is pleased with oneself that they intended well, such a person does not intend well, he intends to flatter himself with notions of beatitude, rather than to carry out the work any religious teaching calls one to do. At the doctrinal level, Jains believe in an eternal soul, in closer line with Upanishadic thought, whereas Buddhists famously believe in non-self as the cornerstone of the doctrine and first consequence of dependent co-arising, which is one of two things all Buddhists share faith in as that revealed to the Buddha during the night of his initial enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. However, of course in at least some, common, sense there is a self, which Buddhists regard as provisional and illusory rather than ultimate. But Buddhists share the belief in karma and rebirth, and so something must be reborn from each lifetime to the next. Keeping the soul cleansed of literal defilements, which negative karma attaches to it, follows from a strangely more thoroughgoing belief in the irrelevancy of the self, not even whose intentions factor into its spiritual destiny. Jains believe in an ultimacy, but incompletion, of the partial perspective which sees the self as essential. Buddhists believe that the ordinary view of the world is fundamentally diluted, rather than merely incomplete, 